Hello and welcome back to the Lion Life Academy presented Unboxable Unstoppable podcast. The Lion Life Academy is a monthly coaching membership and community helping mothers find their way back to themselves so they can be bold custodians of their health, their families and the planet and in doing so rewrite the future. So I'm very thrilled to be able to say this is episode 22 I believe of the podcast. Can't believe it. It has been incredible. I mean, that means I've almost been doing this for half a year. And I tell you what, it's so much fun. I had a super great fun chat with a guest today and I just realized that, gosh, I've been loving it so much. And most of the reason that I'm loving it, I think, is that I just get to show up and be myself and share things that I carry in my heart every day that I don't always get to share in such a friendly medium and you can switch it off whenever you like. <laughs> so I don't have any worries about, you know, boring you or giving you ideas you don't want to hear. It's just entirely up to you. There's so much freedom in it. There's so much freedom for you and for me. And I just think that's amazing. And um, one of the reasons I guess I'm mentioning freedom is that today's topic is really just the people that we have around us. And I think more than ever at the moment, I've been in isolation for a couple of weeks and after, you know, three months of being locked down in Sydney, there is a definite sense in the air of being very clear how important connection with other people is and also being very clear about the different experience we're having without that connection, without easy connection with family members all over the world or with friends who we don't live in the same area as, you know, we've been disconnected from people, friends, family, lots of people. And it makes it very clear when you don't have something, what it's like not to have it and what it gives you. And it's kind of got me thinking about really, I guess, the way that we are such a sum of the people around us. You know, there's that classic quote about you are the sum of the five closest people to you. Well, fortunately for me, four people are in my family. So <laughs> I, have, I have an 18-year-old and a husband and an 8-year-old and a 4-year-old. And um, I met them in that order, by the way. That's probably why I said it like that. But yeah, it's just a really interesting thing to realise that those actually are the people that have the greatest influence on me and I on them as well. But there's also some incredible people around me. I've been very, very blessed with amazing friends, some of whom have gone on to do such exciting things in the world. And some of them are becoming guests on this podcast too. There's one I'm going to speak to next week. I'm not going to drop any names, but you'll see as they emerge and as you keep listening, there's just some amazing people around me. And it certainly wasn't something I planned. I was reading yesterday about one of my idols, my character idols, I guess, who is um, Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters. And I did get to meet him at one point. It's a story for another day, but His story was great. He's on, he's, uh, there was an article about him because he's released a new album. And what really struck me about the article was that he too has got, you know, he's got a network of people around him and he's had a network of people around him for a long time who understand him for who he is and who encourage him to be who he is and who totally believe in him. And his mother being the first, she's actually written a book about that. But I just think that's so beautiful. You, you know, the power of doing this for your friends and your friends doing this for you, having ultimate belief in you. And especially as well as parents, if we are able to convey to our children how we believe in them and how we believe that the world will love them and the world will love what they do. It is such a powerful thing to send your child off into the world with that real self-belief, that deep knowledge that they will be appreciated and that they needn't waste their time around those that don't. I was reflecting today on a time in my life when uh, my baby was very young and he was three months old when I separated from my partner at the time. And I remember there was this moment, we were evicted from our apartment actually and (laughs) I think we hadn't been paying the rent. It was a really bad time, it was a really difficult time. So we got evicted from the apartment and 
I had a tiny baby, you know, and I wasn't working. My partner was, but we weren't in a great, we weren't in a great place, neither of us personally, nor our relationship. As much as there was a lot of love, it wasn't, it wasn't um, a healthy relationship for either of us, I don't believe, certainly not for me. So we were in this place where I knew that if we didn't find somewhere to live, you know, I'd be homeless and I'd been homeless previously for a couple of weeks. So I was pretty, I was pretty, oh no, I hadn't been homeless at that time. No, I hadn't. That's right. But I had had periods of uh, not knowing where I was going to move when I'd been asked to move out of places. And it was a terrible feeling. So I'd moved many, many times in the years prior to that because of my own instability and because of choosing the wrong places to live and the wrong kinds of flatmates and, you know, ongoing situation. Being really unreliable person myself, you know, I was terrible flatmate at the time. So basically what happened was um, I was pretty desperate to find somewhere to live, especially because I had a young baby and I was very um, concerned about not having somewhere to live. And so my maternal instinct's pretty high at that point, right, with all the hormones, you know, post-birth. Anyway, so I went looking for places and I remember my partner wasn't too keen. I think he wasn't too keen to move partially because I'm just suspecting because he had family he could go stay with outside of Sydney where we lived at the time. So I didn't really want to go live with his family though. I didn't at that point in time, I guess I didn't really trust myself to be around other people or in their homes. I also didn't really trust that they had my best interests at heart. And this is where the the story becomes relevant. So because I didn't trust that they had my best interests at heart, because they didn't know me very well, to be honest. Now I would. Now they're my family. I completely adore them. But at that time, we didn't know each other so well. And I didn't know them. They didn't know me. So so it was very difficult to really trust them and, and want to go and stay in a community I didn't know and I didn't understand and I didn't feel like I was very safe in myself. I probably knew that I wasn't very reliable and didn't want to be around other people as well. So I found a place to live. I was really lucky. This friend of mine had this apartment um, that was in the bottom of an old house that was probably going to be knocked down. It was really nice, had a back garden, which was rare. Where I was living, that was pretty rare near Bondi in Sydney. So it was really cheap. So we moved, you know, and my partner did not want to move there, but I was like, I got to go. I got to find somewhere to go. I can't just go nowhere. You know, I don't have family to go to. And that was kind of the end of our relationship really because he didn't want to move into that place. We, I think we knew that we were in a really unhealthy situation. But at that time, so most of my friends at that time were his friends. I didn't have any really close friends. I had a couple who ended up being very dear friends. You know who you are. But the thing is that um, I didn't really have that close crew. I had kind of burned my bridges through my years of addiction and being just not very reliable, not very nice, you know. And there were some people who adored me but kind of at a distance, you know. And those people are still my friends. But at that time they were keeping their distance. They knew I think that I was quite dangerous and (laughs) unpredictable. So my point is I knew at that point in time that I did not have a group of people around me that really had my back. I did not have the people that I needed close to me to really build me up and get me through what was essentially a very destructive and awful time in my life. There were those that loved me. There were those that were giving me difficult truths and I'll never forget that. There was a couple who I'm still quite close to really who said to me, you know, you can't go on like this. And there were people who took me in when I was desperate and it was amazing. I wasn't completely alone. I'll I'll be honest, I'm I'm not downplaying what those people did for me. It was incredible. But they didn't know how to be close because I couldn't be close with myself. I couldn't connect deeply within. I was really damaged. I was really traumatised and had a lot of stuff to work out. Now, over the next couple of years, I did work out a lot of that stuff. I did overcome addiction and heal myself of a lot of the really deep down problems that I had. But it took a long time. And, you know, now looking back, I'm just, I'm amazed I got through it really. And, And when I think about the people that I've got around me now, like just during this past couple of weeks where I've not been able to leave the front door, every single day, sometimes a couple of times a day, I've had people dropping things on my doorstep and just being the most incredible friends, so many check-ins and so many just amazing. And, you know, I've got people around me now. If I've got a problem, I know exactly. I can ring them up. I can say, hey, I've got this issue. Can you help me talk through it or help me work it out? Uh, It's amazing. And I don't think I've ever felt that way in my life. And 
really to, to all of you people out there who you know who you are that I completely adore and who take care of me all the time. You're amazing to me and you are basically how come I can be good. You're the reason that I'm able to believe in myself. I'm kind of borrowing the belief of others a lot of the time to be able to extend myself into new projects, into this podcast, into all of the things that I'm doing at the moment to build other people up. I really can only do that because of the belief that my inner circle has in me. And what a blessing. Like it's just an incredible feeling. I don't think I've ever actually had, I think I had a little bit, a little bit of it in Bath. I had beautiful friends in Bath. If you're listening, shout out to the Bath girls. Bath in England, amazing. We didn't have baths together. We lived in a place called Bath in England. Amazing women. But you know what? I mean, I'm almost out of breath. I just am so, so incredibly grateful for the circle of people I have around me. And I guess the main message is that if you, like I have been in certain times in my life, have people around you that you know deep down, you have a feeling they have not got your back. They are not your people. They are not looking out for you. You're probably right. Now, it's not an easy path out of that. You know, it's not hard to make a big step away from something you know is not healthy for you. I know that better than anyone. I know that it takes huge courage. It takes huge amount of support, actually, sometimes from the most random of places. When I think about the people that were my daily supports during that period of my life, they were very unlikely candidates for those positions. I had caseworkers and women who worked running courses for women like me. You know, they were amazingly supportive even the people I was getting my drugs from at the time, I think they were pretty <laughs> they were pretty supportive. They could see what I was a reasonably good person. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't doing anything too heinous. But, you know, there, there was some pretty dodgy people around me. But nonetheless, I tell you what, it was really remarkable who who steps in when you when you need it most. And there was a group of guys that took my, my son and I in and I stayed with them for, I don't know, nine or ten months, I think. It was crazy. They just gave me their spare room and I stayed there and like it was incredible and I was pretty mad. Like they were so very tolerant of me. They were very generous people. They know they know who they are too. <laughs> but I'll never forget the kindness they showed me. And that really only happened because I took a big step out of a really unhealthy situation that I was in. And, you know, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Like that was a two-year process for me to go from really unsafe to starting to be safe in my choices. It does take a long time but, um, you know, the sooner you start, the sooner it happens. And I guess I just want to say even if it's a small thing, even if it's your life is fairly stable, you have a fairly good life, you have a fairly good partner, you have a good family but you're around a group of friends that that no longer serve you in that way, that no longer really believe in you and maybe you don't feel a resonance with, you can still love them and not have to be close to them, you know, like – I've got loads of people in my life that I absolutely love, but I know that we're different, that we have different interests, we have different beliefs even now. And it doesn't matter how much I still love them, I'm not going to spend loads of time around them and they're not going to spend loads of time around me. When we see each other, it'll be amazing. I love seeing them, you know, and there'll be other things that keep me separate from my friends. Like there's, I know people who listen to this podcast and you know I love you and you know we don't see each other very often. But that doesn't mean there's any less love. It doesn't mean we don't believe in each other, we don't like each other. But it means that we're maybe in different places or stages or parts of the world or have different routines, have different rhythms, you know. That can happen too and that's absolutely fine. And I guess it's just about honouring where you're at now and who's around you and being so incredibly grateful and really spending your time around the people whose energy and whose, who your energy contributes to and their energy contributes to you. And you know how you know? is when you talk to someone and when you leave that conversation, both of you are uplifted. When both of you feel uplifted from a conversation, you know that you guys have got the special magic that each other's need and, and that each other needs. And that is a, such a precious and beautiful thing. And in fact, I would say that we really should settle for nothing less than that, that really, ultimately, we are worth having those sorts of relationships, those qualities of relationships in our lives always. And if you're not that person for someone, although they're not that person for you, there's no hard feelings, you know, like it's, it's how we, it's how we are. We, we walk around this earth and we find our people by following 
those pathways that present themselves to us and by understanding which ones are lit up and free and uplifting and which ones are not. And we follow the ones that bring us the most joy and the most nourishment so that we can bring others the most joy and the most nourishment with our presence. That's the way I look at it. So I don't know if that's of any value to anyone out there. (laughs) But if it is, if this story resonates with you, I really hope that it's been meaningful and helpful and in some way helps you to understand your humanity just as I am always looking to understand mine. Let's keep being curious and keep following our beautiful paths together. And um, please do subscribe, share. I absolutely would love it if you could share this with someone that you think would enjoy it. Share this with a friend that you know will get what we're talking about here and uh, subscribe to this podcast so that people can keep hearing it. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Thank you.